Hello, everyone. I'm Eric D'Souza, and today I'm joined by Pam Barnsley, whose story is up for the best crime short story sponsored by Mystery Magazine for the 2022 Canada uh, Canadian Crime Writers of Canada Awards. Uh, your story is titled What Can You Do? and was published in the Ellery Queen, or sorry, Ellery Queen Mystery Magazine. Uh, welcome, Pam. It's nice to meet you. Thank you, Eric. Nice to be here. Um, as I do with everyone, the first thing I do uh, is I Google your name to see what pops up. And I found an article from a local paper in Whistler, I believe, uh, and it said that you'd like to reinvent yourself. Uh, at the time, it mentioned that your new passion was snowboarding and that you were working on a new manuscript, and I think you're just I finished the first draft, and at the time it was called the Bone Cage. Uh, I guess that was the start of a new change for you because it became the River Cage, and in 2020, uh, it was up for the Unhanged Author Award for Best Unpublished Manuscript. So I was wondering, did you ever get it published? Um, I did not. I, I sent it to an agent, and um, she told me it would be difficult to set to sell a novel into the States, which she would need to do. Uh, that was set in Canada. So um, it's it's set in Canada and I'm working on it again, but I set it aside um, for a while to work on short stories, which are um, shorter and hence easier in some ways for me. Um, and that's what I've been doing for the last year, I guess, almost. Oh, I see. Um, I, I did see though, was this the beginning of the Detective Swift novel or was that something different? Uh, yes, that I've that series, which um, I've got. I'm working on about five of those novels in that series, mm -hmm. and uh, it is the Detective Mary Swift series, and she's a um, disgraced homicide detective who's been bounced from Vancouver up to Whistler, and uh, that's where that that series is set. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I guess you got to embrace your uh, your uh, love of. Uh, being and snowboarding in that novel. Yes, yes, I love Whistler a lot. I lived there for 17 years and it's a beautiful, complicated, irritating, <laughs> marvelous little town. <laughs> it's a good way to put it. Um, like you mentioned that you're taking a break from novel writing to write, I think you told me 10 stories in total. Uh, two of them found a home yet and was accepted at the Ellery Queen Mystery Magazine. Um, yes. One of them being, what can you do? Uh, which is what you're shortlisted for. So uh, what can you tell us about what can you do? The short stories kind of come to me in the middle of the night. I often just get a, an opening line and I have no idea where it's going to go. So then I start writing in the dark and I get ink all over the bedding and the whole thing and all over my fingers. And, and uh, in the morning, sometimes it survives the light of day and sometimes not. But uh, what I like about the short stories as well is that I, they're brand new characters to me. I don't use my detective Mary Swift in them. Uh, they're, they're characters who are kids. Um, they are people who live in cities or the country or what have you. In that one, I, and they're often things that are prompted to me from the news. What can you do works from themes of the Me Too movement, but from the point of view of a woman who feels guilt that she didn't do more to stop somebody. Um, not that they were abusing her, but they were abusing their power over a wide range of other people. And so for me, I love a moral dilemma. I don't see people as simply black and white in their morals or ethics or goodness or what have you. It's everybody's somewhere on the continuum maybe not Mother Teresa, but most of the rest of us are somewhere where we flip and flop and feel guilty about what we've done or haven't done. And that was just that she's an older woman. And that was the takeoff point for me on that particular story. Great, that's a great takeoff point. Um, Thank you. Tell us anything about the other one? Has it been published yet or do we have to wait longer? Uh, the other one, they, they've they just um, agreed to purchase that one. Uh, I don't like to admit this, but of the 10 of them, I can't remember. Oh, which one it was? Oh, no, I remember what it is. Okay, so the, this one that they're going to publish in the future is called Street versus the Stalker. And it's set in a, a downtown core that may or may not be Vancouver and is a conglomeration of every kind of character 
um, that I could squeeze into a short story who, and the characters cooperate unknowingly with one another in order to um, thwart a stalker. Um, and so there's elements of humor, but uh, in the short story, which I always like, but mainly it's a serious story. And um, yeah, Street versus the Stalker, that one's coming up in Ellery Queen. They haven't told me which issue they'll be publishing it in yet. We'll have to wait. <laughs> it's a great uh, title, by the way. That's the first time thanks, I've heard it. Thanks, Eric. It's a great title. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have to wait a little bit longer, but only a couple of days to hear another one of your short stories, which is going to be in the Cold Canadian Crime. I know you and I are going to talk a little bit more about that on another day, but can you give us a little sneak peek? Uh, yes, that one um, is set in a lot of my home stomping grounds between Whistler, uh, Vancouver, Whistler, and further north, Anderton, Anderson Lake, which is um, remote in some ways. And so it involves, uh, again, people who uh, consider themselves to be decent enough people, but they have slipped and they often justify what they do in the way of their criminal activities. And that one involves a little bit of um, money laundering within the jewelry uh, industry, Ju uh, un, you know, gems mm -hmm. that have either been cut or not. And um, so everybody who's involved around that has, uh, feels they've been squeezed and pushed towards murder, uh, but they find they have ways to justify that. Wow. You sound like Again, extremely... that one's, and that one I, that one was fun because it's told from four points of view. Um, three, three of the people who are contemplating murder against one another and a, a police officer who also contemplates murder for a different reason. <laughs> That's interesting for a short story to have four points of view. That must have been quite the task. It's hard. I tend, I, I tend to write longer if I could, but you've got to always keep them down to a word count. And so mm -hmm. you have to cut out a lot of things that hurt to cut, um, but probably makes it a better, more readable story. I do, yes. Uh, yeah, I think I have to wait two, three more days before it comes out. <laughs> I can read it on my Kindle. Yes, I'm um, <laughs> waiting to read the other stories in that anthology myself. I've got my pre-order in. Excellent, me too. Uh, any plans for the, originally you told me you wrote 10 in total. Any plans for the remaining seven? Yes, um, I will be sending them out um, as soon as I can get my act together. I like to let them sit for a just a little bit and um, and then I'll start sending out the rest of them bit by bit by bit to a variety of, of markets and um, see where I get to on them. Excellent. Um, so if we go back to the original article I read, it says you like to reinvent yourself. Any plans for reinvention or are you going to stick with story writing for a while? Uh, no, I'll go back to the novel. The, this was really just sort of like a rest. Writing the short stories is a rest for me. It, it just allows me to step away from the novel and not, not be so consumed with it or with the five of them um, and allow me to focus on still writing and still, you know, keeping my craft up and yet it's it's a uh, it's a rest and a relaxation to work on it. But I'm 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 done with the short stories. I really need to set them aside and go back to the back to the novels and and try to get those, uh, or at least um, the second one, which is the one that I'm mm -hmm. focused on now, getting it polished up and sending it out again. So fair enough. Yeah, uh, short stories are a nice break, I guess. Uh, every once in a while, I dabble in flat fiction, so maybe maybe they'll yeah. go even smaller soon. <laughs> All right, Pam, it was a pleasure meeting you. Uh, we will talk again for a little bit more in depth when we do a cold Canadian crime story, but that'll be another day. For now, best of luck on the contest on uh, May 26th. Thank you, Eric. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Take care. Thank you. And bye, everyone. Yeah, bye-bye, everyone.